Welcome to our video on writing chemical formulae. This video is suitable for GCSE students. By the end of this video lesson, you should be able to understand that elements and compounds can be represented by chemical symbols and formulae. You should also be able to interpret chemical formulae to determine the number of atoms and elements present. Finally, you should be able to write chemical formulae for ionic compounds given the formulae of the ions they contain. Now let's first start by looking at what we mean by chemical formulae. Elements are listed in the periodic table and each element has its own chemical symbol. And molecules can be represented by these symbols and this is what we mean by chemical formulae. Because the chemical formulae tells you the number and types of atoms that are present. It tells you which elements are present, it tells you how many atoms of each element are present. And if we look at water, H2O, as our example, that tells us that there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom in every molecule of water. Now when looking at chemical formulae, it's important to note that the first letter of every chemical symbol starts with a capital letter. So you can tell how many elements there are just simply looking at the number of capital letters you have. So now let's look at some examples of chemical formulae and how we interpret them. So in the first example we have CuSO4 and you notice there's three capital letters there. So the first one is for copper, Cu, and there's a capital C, so there's one element. And then there's a capital S for sulphur and then there's a capital O for oxygen. Now if I look at this, there's one copper atom, one sulfur atom, and four oxygen atoms. So I have a total of six atoms in that compound. And if I look at the second example, we have LiNO3. Now this is lithium nitrate. And you can see once again, there's a capital L, a capital N, and a capital O. So I have three elements present, three capital letters, and I've got one lithium atom, I've got one nitrogen atom, and three oxygen atoms present in my compound. So altogether, I have five atoms in that compound. That's what the chemical formula is telling me. So in our final example, we've got MgOH2, which is the formula for magnesium hydroxide. And we've got a capital M for magnesium. We've got a capital O and a capital H. So there are three different elements present. And if we're going to count the atoms, we've got one magnesium. And the OH is in brackets. And there's a two after the bracket, which means you have to times everything in the bracket by two. So we have one magnesium, two oxygens, two hydrogens, a total of five atoms. So now let's test your understanding of this. What we want you to do is pause the video and have a go at these three questions. So we want you to state how many atoms are present in each molecule and name the elements present in each. So let's see how you got on with these three questions. So in question one, we have the chemical formula Na2SO4. Now there are two sodiums, in this because it's Na2, one sulfur and four oxygens, so a total of seven atoms altogether. And in question two, the formula was CuCO3. So we have one copper, one carbon, and three oxygens, which has a total of five atoms. Note it is carbon and oxygen and not cobalt because there's a capital C and a capital O in this formula. And in the last one, we have CaNO3 in brackets 2. So remember, everything in the brackets has to be times by 2. So it's 1 calcium, 2 nitrogens, 6 oxygens, which gives us a total of 9 atoms altogether. So you should now be able to interpret chemical formula. And in the next part of the video, we're going to look at how we write chemical formula. Being able to write chemical formula means that we can progress from being able to write just simple word equations to describe a chemical reaction to chemical equations. 
So when replacing the name of an element in a word equation with a symbol, all we use is the symbol in the periodic table for that element. And if we're dealing with a compound, what we do then is we replace the name of the compound with its chemical formula. For the vast majority of compounds you come across a GCSE, you're able to work out the chemical formula for these compounds using information given to you. However, there are a few compounds that we recommend that you learn the chemical formula for. Before discussing which compounds you should learn the chemical formula for and which ones it's easier just to work them out using the information given, we need to look at elements that are diatomic. Although the majority of elements are made up of single atoms, a few elements are diatomic. In other words, they're made up of molecules with pairs of atoms joined together. Now, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen are all gases and they are all diatomic because oxygen is made up of O2 molecules, hydrogen H2 molecules, nitrogen N2 molecules. Now, the other elements that are diatomic that you need to be aware of are group 7 elements. So group 7 elements that you'll come across will be things like fluorine, F2, chlorine, Cl2, bromine, Br2, and iodine, I2. So when writing chemical formula, you have to remember that if it's a gas and an element, such as oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, you have to remember that they're diatomic. And if you're dealing with a group 7 element, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, they're also diatomic. So now let's get back to compounds. So for the majority of compounds, we can work out the chemical formula and you'll be given information in the exam to do this. But there are some compounds that we recommend that you should learn the chemical formula for. So in these two tables, I've included some of the compounds where I feel it's important that you learn the chemical formula. So in the table, I've included chemicals such as water, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, ammonia, carbon monoxide, where you'll come across these compounds in chemical reactions that we study at GCSE. I've also included methane, because at GCSE you will learn about organic chemistry, and methane is one of the first compounds that we will look at. And I've also included acids, because at GCSE, one of the big topics is acids, bases, and salts. So I've included the four acids I would expect you to know the chemical formula for. Hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, and ethanoic acid. Now, these compounds all have one thing in common. They're all made up of non-metals. And we call this type of compound, that's made up of non-metal atoms, a covalent compound and in the bonding topic you'll learn more about covalent compounds and you'll understand a little bit about their structure and their properties. Now the type of compound where we can work out the chemical formula from information given is called an ionic compound. Now ionic compounds are made up of a metal and a non-metal and at GCSE these are the vast majority of compounds that you come across. Now, ionic compounds are made up of charged particles called ions. They're made up of positively charged particles attracted to negatively charged particles. And an example of an ionic compound would be sodium chloride, because sodium's a metal and chlorine's a non-metal. Other examples of ionic compounds would be potassium bromide. Potassium's a metal, bromine's a non-metal. Or copper oxide. Copper's a metal, oxygen's a non-metal. So ionic compounds are made up of positive and negative ions which attract together. And this table shows you the symbol and charge of the different ions that you'll come across at GCSE. And this table is given to you in the WJC exam. It's on the back of the exam paper. And we use this table of ions to work out the chemical formula of an ionic compound. So now let's look at how we use this table of ions to work out the chemical formula. So in my first example, I'm going to work out the chemical formula for sodium chloride. 
Now, sodium chloride is made of a metal and non-metal. And the sodium ion is Na+. We get that from the table of ions. And the chloride ion is Cl-. Now, because I've got one unit of positive charge and one unit of negative charge, they just cancel out. And the chemical formula is NaCl. So in my next example, I'm going to work out the formula for magnesium oxide. So once again, all I have to do is look up the iron for magnesium. And I find that the iron for magnesium in my table is Mg2+. And my iron for oxide is O2-. And once again, as these charges are the same in terms of their unit, 2 plus and 2 minus, they cancel out. And my chemical formula is just simply MgO. My second set of examples that I'm going to look at, I'm going to include compounds that consist of molecular ions. Now, molecular ion is a molecule with a charge. So in sodium hydroxide, I have Na+, plus, I can get that from the table, and the hydroxide ion is OH-. Minus. Now that's a molecular ion, it's a molecule with a charge. Now once again, all I do with this is if the charges are the same, 1 plus and 1 minus, they simply cancel out. So the chemical formula for this is NaOH. And in my next example, I have magnesium sulfate. Now magnesium is a group two element and it has a two plus charge, Mg2 plus, and the sulfate ion is a molecular ion, SO4 two minus. Because we have the same unit of charge on each, two plus, two minus, the chemical formula is MgSO4 because the charges just cancel out. So now let's look at some harder examples. And in these examples, we don't have the same unit of charge on the positive and negative ion. So let's look at sodium oxide. The ion that we have for sodium is Na+. The ion that we have for oxide from the table is O2-. minus. So when writing any chemical formula, what we're trying to do is cancel out all the charges. So I need two pluses here to cancel out the two minus. So the formula should be Na2O. Now if I can't see that, my second way of working this out is to simply swap the numbers over. Swap the two and the one. There's one plus for sodium, two minus for oxygen, swap them over, it becomes Na2O. Here's my second example, magnesium chloride. The charge for magnesium is Mg2+. The charge for a chloride ion is Cl-, minus. it's got a one minus charge. Now I can either think of how many minuses do I need to cancel out the two plus? Two, so therefore it should be MgCl2 or just simply swap the numbers over. Swap the two plus with the minus, swap them over, so it becomes Mg1Cl2. We don't write the one, we just leave it as MgCl2. So let's look at another two examples. So my next example, we've got aluminium oxide. Now aluminium has a three plus charge, and an oxide ion has an O2 minus charge. And there's two ways to go about working out the formula for this. The first thing I can do is find a number that three and two go into, so six. And I can either go, right, how do I get them both up to six plus and six minus, times the aluminum by two to get it up to six plus, and times the oxygen by three to get it up to six minus, and they would cancel out, or just swap the numbers over, Al2O3. So in my next example, I have copper fluoride. Copper is a Cu2 plus ion. Fluoride is an F minus ion. Now I would look at this and go, how many minuses do I need to cancel out the two plus? Well, I need two fluoride ions, two minuses to cancel that out. So the formula is CuF2. Or I can simply swap the numbers over and it becomes CuF2. So in this last set of examples, we have compounds that are made up of molecular ions, and we also have ions that have different charges. So if we look at the first example, sodium sulfate, sodium's made up of a one plus charge, Na plus, and the sulfate ion is SO4 to minus. So I would need two Na pluses, two pluses to cancel out the SO4 to minus. So the formula is Na2SO4. 
or if I use the method of swapping over the numbers, you see that the two swaps with the one and it becomes Na2SO4. So in our last example, we have the compound magnesium hydroxide. Now magnesium hydroxide consists of Mg2 plus ions and OH minus ions. And the OH minus ions are the molecular ions. So when working out the formula, we can either think of it like this, how many OH minus ions do I need to cancel out a two plus charge? Two, and therefore the formula is MgOH2. Or we just simply swap the numbers over, swap the two and the one, and the formula is MgOH2. Now it's important that we put brackets around the O and the H because we have two OHs. And if we don't put brackets, it looks like we have one oxygen and two hydrogens. We don't, we have two OHs, two oxygens, two hydrogens. So now it's your turn to have a go at some questions. We wanna test your understanding of your ability to write chemical formula. So pause the video and have a go at writing the chemical formula for the six compounds that are listed on this slide. So let's see how you got on with those questions. So the first question was lithium fluoride. It's made up of Li plus and F minus. So when we have the same unit of charge on both the positive and negative ions, they cancel out and the formula is LiF. So in question B, we have potassium oxide. Potassium is a K plus ion. The oxide ion is O2 minus. I would need two K pluses to cancel out an O2 minus. I can swap the numbers over if it makes it easier and the formula is K2O. So for question C, we have calcium chloride. Calcium is made up of Ca2 plus ions. Chloride is Cl minus ions. I would need two Cl minus ions to cancel out every Ca2 plus. So the formula is CaCl2. Alternatively, swapping the numbers over, I would have one calcium and two chloride ions, CaCl2. So here we have aluminium sulfate for question D and aluminium is Al3 plus, sulfate's SO4 2 minus and the easiest way to do this would be to swap the numbers over so the chemical formula would be Al2 SO4 3. Now the brackets are really important here because if I didn't put brackets around the sulfate iron it would look like it had 43 oxygens and I don't, I have three SO4s. Now let's look at E, calcium hydroxide. Calcium is Ca2 plus. The hydroxide ion is OH minus. So I would need two OH minuses to cancel out each calcium. So the formula is CaOH2. Once again, the brackets are important because I have two OHs for every calcium. And our last question, F, ammonium chloride. Ammonium ion is NH4 plus. Chloride ion is Cl minus. Because I have the same unit of charge on each, this simply cancels out and the formula is NH4Cl. So to conclude our video, let's look back at the lesson objectives. So by the end of this video lesson now, you should be able to understand that elements and compounds can be represented by chemical symbols and formulae. You should be able to interpret chemical formulae to determine the number of atoms and elements present. And finally, you should be able to write chemical formulae for ionic compounds, given the formulae of the ions they contain. So that concludes our video. Please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. Rowe Chemistry, and our Twitter site, which contains lots of chemistry information and links, at Radicemistry.